Welcome back to the channel everyone, Triple Limit here and today of course we're unboxing and testing the new Fire TV Cube. Now this is the third generation like I mentioned, ton of new features but let's go over some of the main specifications. So this one is going to come with an octa core, it's going to max out at 2.2 gigahertz, 800 megahertz GPU, 16 gigs of storage and it does have 2 gigs of RAM. It is compatible with Wi-Fi 6E and this uh, tri-band also supports 802.11, ABGYN, AC and AX. Bluetooth 5.0, of course it has the, the microphone so it does have far field as well as near field voice support. So anywhere in the room, close to the room, if you yell out the A word, it's going to hear you and it does have a lot of cool features. Um, that's not really available on the Fire Stick. Uh, features such as um, changing your TV channels, switching devices, turning TVs on and so on and so forth. That's the beauty of the Fire TV Cube. So enough about the details, let's go ahead and get it out of the box. That's the box of the third generation. This is the box of the first generation. So I did skip the second generation, but if I was to move them this far back, you probably couldn't tell the difference if you weren't looking at the pictures. Kind of stick with the design that works for them. And you'll see a lot of that um, continuity when we go ahead and get out of the box. So a lot of it looks the same if you own a Fire TV Cube. No knife needed for this one. It made it easy for folks like me that um, always have trouble unboxing these things all right here's the big reveal and that's what it looks like all right so we have the cube we have a box we have a remote and we have some batteries let's go ahead and start with the box right here uh, quick start guide uh, the setup should be pretty straightforward uh, guys it also has another box with nothing in there. That's that's the first. We have the charger right here, and um, you can see the information right there. It is going to be a 15 watt charger, pretty thick, but that's what um, we usually get from Amazon. We also have the remote control. Let's take a look at this. So when I first saw the the reveal of this device, I thought it came with the upgraded remote, and that's the one with the backlight and everything. So quick remote control comparison. So this is uh, the normal remote that you get with the Fire Stick. Uh, this is the one that you get with the new Fire TV Cube. And you can see it looks a little bit different. They do have some additional buttons uh, in this area right here and they move some stuff around. Cool thing of course that they did provide two uh, AAA batteries for us to get this connected with. Again, Amazon with the papers. I guess it um, makes it recyclable so that's Okay, I guess. And I'm digging the new look with the mesh or the, the fabric around the device itself. Um, underneath doesn't really have much information. It says Fire TV. On top, of course, you have your plus minus. You do have your mute and you have your your active button or your listen button uh, fabric goes all the way around and then the back is where we get into um, some of those new additions so we do have the HDMI input HDMI output these are both HDMI 2.1 um, the maximum output is going to be 4k 42160p maximum input is going to be 1080p at 60 Hertz so IR extender um, they have the power port USB port and this is a full USB A and they have Ethernet and the big um, controversy is that this is 10 100 uh, Ethernet so it's not going to give you gigabit speeds but I'll let you guys know how I feel about that here in a, in a little bit. So another quick comparison between the new device and the old device like I said this one went more with the fabric look this one was more glossy where you can kind of see every fingerprint so um, Put something in the community section, everyone has their preference. Let me know if you prefer the shiny over the fabric. Of course, the main difference is the back of this just has a lot more ports. So let's get it set up and then we'll do some more tests. So it is gonna ask you to do a quick update after you um, connect to your Wi-Fi. It takes about 10 minutes or so. So of course, you know that one of the main um, 
selling points for the Fire TV Cube is the ability to control your television, control your receivers, control your sound bars, uh, compatible sound bars, as well as your cable box. Don't have any of those devices to test with, but I, I do plan on doing some follow-up videos on this device, so stay tuned. So, and we're just gonna select do this later. So quick run through over the user interface. If you guys own a Fire Stick, uh, this is what it looks like. Essentially, uh, they did redesign the user interface uh, recently, and they've been pushing updates very frequently. So uh, that's one good thing to know about Amazon devices, that the updates will come in. I think they promise at least four years of updates. Let's jump right into it, guys. First thing I wanna do is check, can we still install third-party applications? And let's see if developer options is still available. So we're gonna go to My Fire TV. There's no developer options right there, and this is something that they started doing. So in order to enable developer options, you wanna to go to About, Highlight, My Fire TV, and you wanna tap OK six or seven times. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right, three steps away. And now we're a developer. So if we go back, you can see now we have developer options and now we should be able to go in. From here, you can enable ADB debugging if you want to, um, ask some unknown sources. How that works now is that it only enables applications that's capable of installing third-party apps. So and Explorer is the default. And when we install other apps like Explore File Explorer, or even download it once that's installed, that should pop up as an option. So developer options is available for you to install third-party applications. So while we turn that on, let's see if we can install applications from a USB. So USB's in, let's go to our storage and see what we can do um, with additional storage. All right, so we're gonna go to My Fire TV. All right, so right there, it did pop up USB drive. Let's click on it and see what happens. So two options here, eject USB drive and format to internal storage. So for anyone asking how is storage handle, you do have the option to adapt storage and that's what we call this because what it does is combine the USB drive or hard drive or whatever drive you connect to this device basically makes it a part of the system drive and allows you to install certain applications on that drive. So if you ever run out of space, uh, you do have an option to add storage. So that's pretty cool that um, the ability to adapt storage is there. I'm not gonna do that because once you do that, it will erase everything on the USB. Uh, what I wanna do is see if I can install applications from that USB. All right, so normally I use Explore File Explorer. Uh, it's pretty good for kind of showing your USB, showing what's on it. And you can see that USB drive is detected. If I click on it, we gotta hit allow. All right, you can see I have some applications here. I have 3D Mark, I have IDA64, Geekbench, Send Anywhere. Um, so let's see if we can install, uh, let's start with 3D Mark. So just like I said before, you have to go into your settings, you have to uh, enable um, explore to install third-party applications. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna turn on download as well as ES File Explorer. All right, so we're gonna go back and we're gonna go ahead and try it again. All right, so application installed. So uh, we're gonna hit done. All right, so for anyone asking, can you install third-party applications? Yes, you can. All right, so I do have a sample right there. I think that was a review I did. Let's play it and just see how it handles just streaming media from a drive. All right. So that's playing directly from the USB drive, guys. So if you're on the go, if you have movies, TV shows, home movies, that's on the USB hard drive, you can't plug it in directly and it should work. So next thing I wanna do is my network speed test. So what I wanna do is a speed test on Wi-Fi, speed test on the ethernet and see where we are. So let's go ahead and start with the Wi-Fi speed test. All right, so I am on Spectrum. I am paying for 400 megabits per second. Uh, you can see I am connected on uh, Wi-Fi 6, five gigahertz. Uh, currently, download is 450 megabits per second. Upload is, uh, look like it's gonna be around 18, 17, 18 which is about what I'm paying for. Um, let's connect it to the wired network and see if it makes a difference. All right, guys, so you can see right here, it does say that I'm wired in at the top. And, and if it's 10, 100 uh, ethernet, then I shouldn't get anything over 100 megabits per second. So let's give it a shot. All right, so that 
pretty much confirms it. And while we're on the topic, let's talk about the whole issue with the 10100 Ethernet. So a lot of people are complaining about this. And my question to those people is, uh, what are you doing on this device that requires 500 or 1000 or gigabit download speeds? This is a streaming device. Uh, 4K streaming only needs 30 megabits per second, I believe. Um, anything under that, it goes down. So it would be nice to have that gigabit, but is it really needed on this device? And I, I put that in the poll section as well. Like I said, we always want to um, demand the best from the manufacturer and I'm all for that. But in this case, is it making a difference not having a gigabit ethernet? Um, drop your thoughts in the comments. So on to the next one. Uh, a lot of people want to know if this has a Plex server or can this run Plex? And uh, we'll, we'll test it out. I don't think it is, uh, but let me go ahead and sign in and then we'll, we'll just see. All right, so here we are in my Plex, and um, right away we can see that this is a Plex uh, media player, so this is a client application. Uh, doesn't seem like the server is available, but uh, you would really have to go into your settings to see if that's an option, so let me check it out. All right, experience, appearance, account. All right, so many account information, the quality, audio, video, subtitled, advanced. So we do have uh, the pass-through there. As an option, license, um, but like I said, um, if this had the capability of being a Plex uh, media server, you would see um, the option to turn on the server here, um, just like it does on Nvidia Shield TV, um, and you can see it doesn't have it. it does have some of the same settings, but. Um, this right here, guys, is not going to um, be a Plex media server, so keep that in mind. The USB port in the back, used for storage, used for adapting storage. It also is compatible with your camera, so if you guys want to plug in a USB camera into the back of that device, maybe for a Skype call or something, that is uh, an option. But as far as just using it for Plex, that's not going to happen. Let's do a quick benchmark and see where it stacks up next to the NVIDIA Shield TV. So the overall score was a 2595. The graphics score was a 2590. Let's compare it to the Nvidia Shield. Uh, the Nvidia Shield scored a 4628 overall versus the 2595 that this scored. But its breakdown is really interesting because on the graphics score, the Nvidia Shield really dominates. The Nvidia Shield, um, and this is the 2017 Shield. Um, the graphics score is a 7832 versus on the new Fire TV third generation, the graphics score is a 2590. So years later, the Nvidia Shield still has a better graphics card, which makes sense because the Nvidia Shield is a gaming device at heart. But the new Fire TV third generation is ahead of the Shield when it comes to the CPU score or the physics. So the physics score for the new Fire TV Third generation is 2614 versus 1903 for the NVIDIA Shield TV. So overall, the processor is going to be a little bit better on the new Fire TV, but the graphics is a little bit better on the NVIDIA Shield. So take your pick. Both devices are going to do what you need it to do. Now, I always like to go into ID64 just to get a breakdown of what's under the hood. Um, they tell you on the Amazon page that, hey, uh, this is... 800 megahertz or whatever, but they don't give you the, the innards of what's inside and that's what IDA provides. So as far as the system, we click on that, you see the model, you see the board, you see the installed RAM, which is right, total memory, available memory, internal storage, internal free storage, which we did install some apps, the external storage, so that's the SD card that I have plugged in or the USB that I have plugged in. And it gives you the Bluetooth version and some other information. Let's go back, CPU. So this gives you the exact breakdown. So 4X ARM Cortex-A73 at 2208 megahertz, as well as a Cortex-A53 at 2060 megahertz. It is a 64-bit and you can see it has eight cores. Four core at the 2.2 gigahertz and for at the 2.0 gigahertz. The graphics on the Amazon page, they don't really tell you anything, but you can see um, right now I'm connected to a, a 1080p monitor, so it is gonna say a 1920 by 1080p, um, but it gives you the exact CPU um, arm. It's a Mali G52. Refresh rate is currently 60 hertz. Landscape gives you the version. All right, network, I'll probably have to blur a lot of this out. All right, gives you the IP address and some other information. 
All right, so it is running Android 9 Pi, and we just pushed a couple updates, and we might have some more left because these updates are coming fast. So just a quick look of what's actually under the hood. So let's go over this HDMI and what can we do with it. So the HDMI in the maximum input resolution is 1080p, so you're not gonna be able to pass 4K through, so keep that in mind. So this is meant for your streaming devices, your cable boxes, it allows you to control them with the voice function so you can tell it to change the channel or tell it to turn on whatever cable box. So that's where that HDMI comes in. And to get to that HDMI settings, if you go to your display and sounds, you're gonna go to HDMI pass through and it says when on Fire TV Q will match the HDMI output to the original video format of the source content from the HDMI device blah 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 so you can see it can do a satellite receiver game and console if your fire tv is in sleep mode your tv will not receive the signal so if we go to your input setup i believe the first one is just the usb that's plugged in it just finds all the devices find all the, the videos on it but if you go to hdmi this is where you can go through the actual setup guys you can see it says tv input switch to hdmi make sure your device is powered on So here we are just uh, streaming a 4K video and normally I like to do this and just turn on stats for nerds and what that gives me is just an idea of how well it's performing as far as just the drop frames and the bandwidth and connection speed. So you can see, uh, like I said, I am connected to a 1080p monitor. That's why you've seen that the resolution is uh, 1080p. Uh, of over 3700 frames, zero has dropped. Um, this is at 60 hertz, by the way. You can see the connection speed, um, healthy stream, everything looks really good. So really just give you an idea of how good it looks. Uh, on this device, you're not gonna have any issues uh, playing videos, you're not gonna have any issues streaming, whether you're using Plex, whether you're using YouTube, whether you're using YouTube TV or Hulu, Netflix. This is gonna handle all of that with no issues. Alexa, what's the weather like in San Francisco? Alexa, play next video. So like I said, that's the beauty, and let me just exit out of this, there's an ad. That's the beauty of uh, the Fire TV Cube is that everything is hands-free, guys. Um, Alexa, open Tubi. Okay. So here's a look at the remote and uh, just quickly go over. Most of the buttons are gonna be the same, but we did have a new row right here or some of the buttons moved around. So we do have our mute right here. We also have our settings, but we also have a new button right here. And this is the, the recent. So let's go ahead and click on it. You can see it shows what apps were recent and let's see if it allows me to close them. All right, so it doesn't allow me to close them. But what it do is at least lets you or gives you the ability to just pull up what you recently were, um, were in. All right, so there we go again. Click it again, it goes back, and you can just swap back and forth. So, so definitely worth mentioning, I do like the addition. However, um, if they could give you the ability to kill the applications from that menu, that would be a, a life change in experience um if i was able to do like this like the nvidia shield and swipe down or swipe up and kill those applications that would be awesome with the xbox one controller now let's go ahead and we'll see if asphalt is any good
So, like I said, a lot of features built in, especially if you're someone who still run your cable box through it. It does control your, your DVD players as well, your Blu-ray players, and um, it does have that input for your, for your game controller. So I think there's a lot going on. I, this is my initial video, so I, I do plan on doing some, some specifics, some follow-ups on different things. So if there's something particularly you want me to test, drop it in the comments. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you